This is Lukadowski of WeAreChange.org here in Dresden, Germany, outside of the 2016 Bilderberg meeting. I have the distinct pleasure to be joined by the one and only Tony Goslin, former BBC journalist, an amazing historian who knows his facts, and it's really just a pleasure to have you on our show. You have been covering Bilderberg for quite a while, and you are also on top of the Brexit. What is the connection between the two? Well. Bilderberg have been involved massively with the creation of the European Economic Community, which Britain signed up to in 1973. But then the EEC changed into something different, didn't it? It changed into a political union. It changed into a, an organization that wanted to have a single European army, that kind of thing. So I think most people in Britain are annoyed that they never signed up for this. And that's why Britain's getting another chance to uh, decide whether or not it wants to be part of the European Union in two weeks' time. And I think, to be honest, it's difficult to call, Luke, which way it's going to go. Yeah, it's really interesting when, with the documents that came out from uh, the 1950s Bilderberg meetings, even Devignan coming out and saying, yeah, it was Bilderberg who helped create the euro, seeing this huge integral part to these large corporations for their free trade zones, for their kind of globalization plans. Ultimately, what they're doing is they're trying to consolidate as much power with as big of an area as they can. That's how I see it. How do you see it? And what do you see the objective with uh, the chairman of uh, the Bilderberg Group meeting? A lot of them are against the Brexit. Well, they're all against Brexit. There isn't a single person going to be invited to this that's pro-Brexit. In fact, if anyone starts to say, oh, I think it might be a good idea if uh, countries were to leave the European Union. Now, there will be a little, uh, little notebook will come out and their name will be marked down for removal. <laughs> yeah, that's effectively how these guys work. But look, Paul Craig Roberts is a former uh, official in Reagan's government and he's been pointing out very clearly recently, uh, I, think, I suggest people go, there's a podcast called The Mind Renewed by Julian Charles where he's been spelling it all out. And I wish, Luke, we could have this kind of stuff on our mainstream press. If I was still at the BBC, I'd be putting it on national television. What he's saying is, look, the CIA funded, seed funded European federalism back in the 1950s. Uh, and this is what's going on here. Very, very simple. The Americans were fed up with dealing with 30 different ambassadors, 30 different embassies, 30 different countries. Their, their little dream was, well, look, let's just have one that we can deal with. And so they spent a lot of money on what was called the European movement. Uh, and the Bilderberg was a part of that. What they were doing in the 1950s and 60s was bringing all the leaders of industry, media, politics together, uh, and finance, of course, yeah. <laughs> and seeing, saying, look, we've got a great idea here. Why don't we bring everyone together in a big free trade zone? And once those people were out of the way, then it became a more of a political union. But they've got a whole load of politicians, mostly failed politicians, uh, who have become commissioners, and there's a massive gravy train. The European MEPs have very little or no power, but they get a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They get a big staff. Uh, and the same with the European commissioners. If someone fails in politics in Britain, then they get snapped up as a European commissioner, and they get a job there, a massive gravy train. So there's a big influence. And the thing people sometimes forget is nowadays almost all of our media, mainstream media, are corporations. Mm -hmm. They want a corporate controlled Europe. They don't want a Europe for the people. And a lot of those corporations and a lot of those powers that be are inside, right in front of us at the Bilderberg meeting. There's also, uh, from HSBC and Goldman Sachs, I was wondering what power forces do you see behind uh, going against the Brexit and also a part of Bilderberg that you think are most influential and most powerful? Well, almost all the political parties uh, now in Britain seem to be mostly uh, for the European Union. And that's, there's all sorts of reasons for that. For example, the British Green Party, um, when it was a grassroots party, was totally against the European Union. They used to deliberately send uh, MEPs to Brussels and uh, say that they were there just to negotiate a way out of it. So, but that's all changed, and there's been manoeuvring going on within the political parties. Those who are pro-European federalism tend to have been promoted through the parties, uh, and we've had the whole era of Blair, right, and the Blairites in the Labour Party, although the Labour Party was traditionally against uh, European federalism because of the way that it brought too much power under one roof, and although there's some guarantees for workers that the EU do, it's just a concentration of power in corporate hands. So the, once the politics has been co-opted by the EU, um, once the uh, media has been co-opted by the EU, as they have, I mean, for example, the BBC, get an enormous grant annually, they don't talk about it, from the European Union, then it's 
the rest of it is easy to do. So, I mean, I think the thing is that the, the refugee crisis and the financial crisis, Luke, have really started to concentrate people's minds. We are looking in, in the UK saying, thank God we kept the pound. If we hadn't, we'd be in the same sort of situation as some of these Southern European countries now uh, under the Euro system. So that, those, the, it's the refugee crisis, I think, which has really precipitated this within the Conservative Party. And the whole of the debate, really, it's interesting that the whole of the debate is happening from and by Conservatives. There's hardly anyone else involved in it. And one of the things I'd just point your viewers to, I actually did a, an interview with Spanish radio about the origins of the European Union and as a German cartel, right? Because back at the end of the Second World War, we had big German industries who were in running Germany as, in, as cartels. So if whatever company won a contract, they'd share the work out amongst all the companies. So the public always got stitched up. They wanted to roll this system out. And you know what they called it? They were talking about it in 1943 in Berlin. The Europäischen Wirtschaftsgemeinschaft, which translates into English as the European Economic Community. So there is definitely a big emphasis on corporate control, stitching up the public and having big companies making the laws, effectively deregulating. Look at what's happened, for example. There's been no effective regulation with the banking system. When we had the crash in 2008, the uh, European Union got together a committee to deal with it all, right? They just elected a whole bunch of bankers who've been involved in the fraudulent banking crisis in the first place and they decided to do absolutely nothing about it. So you're dealing with a monstrosity, a United States of Europe is what they're trying to create. And, and um, you know, so you've got a link there between the, I suppose, 200 and, sorry, 320 million in the States, is it? Mm -hmm. Roughly? Yep. 500 million will be under the United States of Europe. Is that what ordinary people want? Will it work for ordinary people? Of course it won't. Yeah. So there's everybody in this Bilderberg meeting, I think, is going to be thinking about the Brexit. So there's two things I'd say about that. Is this meeting is here to save the European Union. Can they make it actually work as a functioning... Will it be fit for purpose to actually run Europe, even if we want it, whether we want it or not? But it almost, almost uh, also may be, and this is my sceptical part of me thinking this, but it's possible, Luke, that you've got... A, a faction inside there that thinks good the Brits go we can have a financial cleanup and we can make a million out of this we can clear up on the downturn and so they're they're basically spread betting aren't they so whether or not the whether or not they keep control of these 500 million people under the EU or whether it all falls apart in a financial disaster these guys are still going to make money and they use that money for war you know I think that's pretty clear that yeah. that's one thing that the uh, Chancellor Schmidt from Germany's Defence Minister Andreas von Bülow has been spelling out to the Germans in the press here, anyone that's actually managed to read it, I think you can get it translated, but von Bülow is saying, look, anyone that goes into this meeting, there's one thing you've got to watch out for, don't say anything against the Pentagon, otherwise they'll mark your name down. Yeah. And as we know, a lot of the kind of ruling elites, their kind of philosophy is order out of chaos and divide and conquer, and they have definitely done that with the banking crisis, with the refugee crisis, dividing people amongst religion, among class, and making each other fight. Meanwhile, these guys come up on top no matter what the crisis is. Uh, so it's really interesting to see what's going to happen out of this Bilderberg meeting because yet again, when we have BP, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, Google, Facebook, and all these kings and queens and prime ministers and, and all these chancellors coming together, that's a lot of power. Uh, behind there. That's a lot of colluding in secret and there could be a lot of deals done that could do virtually anything in this world. And they admitted they created the euro. Now they're probably going to do everything in their power to make sure that they stay with that power. But even if they don't, they still profit. Uh, so my last question is how do you see things unfolding, especially with the list of members that are going to be attending this year? Is there any particular member that sticks out to you and says, oh crap, he's going to be really involved in this? Yeah. Yeah, there's one guy on that list who most people would look at it and say, well, he looks a, a perfectly normal chap. His name's Carsten Kengeta. He's the former head of LIBOR at UBS in Switzerland. Now, as you may know, there was a massive LIBOR fraud, and a lot of it was centred around UBS in Switzerland. A particular trader called Tom Hayes was working for Carsten Kengeta, and he's now doing 15 years in the UK, even though he took into the courtroom when he was prosecuted last year. He took uh, the manual UBS gave him when he started work, how to fix the LIBOR rate. He took it and said, look, this was just part of my job when I was working for Carsten. 
in Switzerland. So he was then headhunted, Tom was, all the way around the banking world. And I just think the guy really needs to be out of jail. He sh he's not the main man, he's the four guy. And uh, so Carsten then went on, he's, I think maybe UBS decided that he was a little bit too hot to handle. So he's gone on to take over the German stock exchange, right? So he's come back to Germany. And now he wants to take over the London Stock Exchange. So I, just, I was chatting to the uh, police chief guy over there earlier on saying, look, what are you doing here? You've got financial criminals. You've got war criminals even turning up to these meetings. We are paying for you to be here. Why are you not arresting them? <laughs> Why are you protecting them? Because I could understand it if they had private security there, but the people of Germany are paying for the policing of this event, which is just totally wrong. Totally secret, totally undemocratic, totally ruling behind the scenes. Amazing information, Tony. We're going to have the link to your website in the description below. Any closing comments? All I'd say is uh, I love coming. This is the first time I've been to a Bilderberg conference abroad out of the UK. Oh, gosh, for over 10 years. I think the last one was Versailles in France. And it's lovely to see that there's this whole community outside. It's always worth coming along because you, you meet passers-by, you chat to the tourists. And we've had some American tourists, even some history teachers coming by. They're fascinated about what is, what is this all about? This is really interesting. They want your card, they want to know more. Not just that, but you're networking with journalists from all over the world and researchers and people that care about the future, a future that's not dominated by people like this. Beautiful, very well said, Tony. Thank you so much for being on the program. And of course, the mainstream media is not out here, but we are because of you. Subscribe, thank you so much for supporting us. And stay tuned, we're gonna have a lot more coverage of this year's 2016 Global Comfod just blah, mess that's being done right in front of us. Thank you again so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.